I really admire a good Sancerre. My goal is to produce a very elegant Sauvignon Blanc, one that has uh, minerality and more of a fruit undertone, firm acidity, which keeps it fresh and vibrant, but also has some structure on the palate. Hi, I'm Jenny Wagner. Today we are here in Rutherford, Napa Valley at one of the Emelo Vineyards. I feel pretty lucky to be here, and I really have to give it to my great-grandfather who came here from Palermo, Sicily in 1923, along with his two brothers. They came here to Rutherford, Napa Valley, uh, where they purchased property, the property previously been a sheep ranch. So the brothers together planted that virgin soil to grapevines. Today, my grandparents, or what I call them, Noni and Nono, um, both live at that same property. Aside from planting different varieties on his land and selling fruit, uh, my nono also ran the rootstock nursery. And by the time the 60s and 70s rolled around, the Emlo rootstock nursery was one of the main purveyors in Napa County um, and along with other counties as well. So over time, my nono had planted many different varieties and he eventually figured out which was well suited to that property. And on that property is now a Sauvignon Blanc vineyard. In 1994, my mom, Cheryl Emelo, started the wine brand Emelo to ensure that the name lived on for generations to come. Over the past few years, I've been working alongside my dad in both the vineyards and winemaking. And today, I'm proud to say that I'm continuing the Emelo legacy. Here is one of my favorite vineyards of Sauvignon Blanc. It's about a four acre vineyard. We've done some pretty cool stuff over the past couple of years. For example, we've done what we call root pruning, um, which means that we go through each row with a shank and cut the feeder roots 20 inches from the ground. The roots are cut, leaving behind the deep roots. So what we get from root pruning is a lower vigor vine and more concentrated fruit with smaller berries. So Oak Knoll is well suited for both Sauvignon Blanc and Merlot because these two varieties are early ripening. Because it's a little bit cooler as it's closer to the bay than say Rutherford. So the longer hang time allows for the varieties to fully develop. And as for the Sauvignon Blanc, the flavors can fully develop. Um, however, it still maintains its firm acidity. Um, so I find that the Sauvignon Blanc from Oak Knoll um, has more um, minerality flavors, whereas Rutherford produces more of that fruit character. And so with that long hang time and well-drained light soil, the Merlot really develops a fine tannin and dark color in a, a well-structured wine. One farming practice that's really critical throughout the growing season for us is crop thinning. We do crop thinning multiple times throughout the growing season, and at about 90% through verasion, we do our final dropping. So verasion is when the fruit changes color from green to purple, and each berry accumulates sugar. For example, this cluster and this cluster have more green berries um, showing less than 90% color, and this cluster is almost fully colored, so we would keep this cluster and remove these two. So by removing green clusters like this, we can ensure even ripening and eliminate any green characters in the wine. A low yield is really important to us because it allows us to produce a more concentrated, rich wine. As harvest is approaching, we really pay attention to the physical qualities of the berries. The wrinkling or dimpling of the berries on this cluster shows very high sugar and very ripe flavors. While this cluster has more full round berries, and although it's not as high sugar and is fully ripe, the seeds are still brown, which still indicates that it is ripe enough to pick. We like to see about 30% of the berries with this, this dimpling and a leathery soft feel to the skin and very dark seeds. All of these are signs that our fruit has reached full ripeness and we're ready to harvest. Merlot is a variety that has potential of being a delicious wine, uh, just as Cabernet Sauvignon here in Napa Valley. Over the years, Merlot's gotten a bad rap and I think 
that that's due to the fact that so many mediocre Merlots have been produced out of California. I think a great Merlot can stand up to a cab any day. Camus makes Cabernet and Emelo makes Merlot.